Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3, and Episode number 356 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show, here on the Cryon Media Network. And let me just move my camera there so that I'm in the center of my screen rather than on the edge. Ah. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And uh, I, I don't think I think I got distracted with the camera. I forgot to say the date, I believe. <laughs> Today's recording day is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. And it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day if I'm looking out the window here at uh, the Beaver Lodge. As I mentioned, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver Pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Big thank you, Ghost Star Podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a nibble for you this morning, but before we do anything else, let's ask Mr. Grizzly how his mental health is doing today, sir. Um... I feel like I haven't slept, and last night was a rough night. I just was not feeling well at all, so I, I didn't even do an ASMR show. I, I was on the couch in gastro pain and headache and just general shittiness. Um, not, feeling, not feeling that way this morning, but I didn't sleep okay. very well. So, uh, yeah, mental health may take a bit of a shit kicking today, but we'll see. We'll see how the day goes. I'll be as positive as I can be, you know. All, all I right. Do. That's all okay. I can do. Yep, yep. Uh, and of course, it's April 9th, so it is post eclipse day, kids and cubs. I uh, hope you had a chance to uh, check it out and you had your appropriate eyewear. Uh, did you get to see it, Mr. Grizzly? Yes, I did. We went up to the roof of the building because our, our laundry room is on the roof here and we have a sunroom and we have an outdoor deck. So I went up and there's a few people up there. We had glasses on, so I was able to check it out. We didn't get totality here in Ottawa, though. It okay. got. It, it looked like it got into early evening, if you will, but that it never totally blocked out the sun. But when I put the glasses on, you could see it was just a sliver of the sun that was visible. Yeah. If you had your glasses off and looked down, you could see it was still not that dark out. But the temperature did drop. So we didn't get totality. I believe Montreal did, uh, but we didn't get totality. So it wasn't, wasn't a full blackout eclipse, but it was awfully darn close. Okay. Uh, we did get totality. Yes. Uh, or it was, um, and it was absolutely awesome. Hmm. I have to say, um, there are times in life where you, you, you see things uh, like I remember when I was on, uh, on Gambier Island or when I was up in Yellowknife in the Northwest territories, hmm. at one point I was just all alone and it was just me and very, 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 very rugged nature and silence, total and complete silence. No sounds from the city, no sounds from anywhere, just the wind and whatever animals were around. And both times, uh, 
the stillness coupled mm-hmm. with the ruggedness of the area was just so breathtaking breathtaking and beautiful and contemplative and whatnot that you just when you allowed yourself to be really still in that stillness it was so beautiful i actually ended up crying twice um and uh this uh while on this one i did not end up crying uh because this one just what i would see with my eyes was just so like Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) my mouth a gate i must have swallowed i swallowed every fly and mosquito on the planet basically because my mouth was wide open. Um, it was something else. Um, and it's one of those things that if you haven't seen, you think, ah, eclipse, blah, whatever. I just, no, no, it really is, um, spectacular. So, um, of course I'm, um, I'm a little, um, safety conscious. So, um, I didn't quite, really, really believe at first that once you had a chief totality, you could actually take off the glasses. <laughs> but Alex is a scientist. And Let since I trust you. science, <laughs> and okay. I trust my sweetie, I did. Uh, I wasn't brave enough to wait uh, to see something with the, what they call the diamond ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have like the full ring and the sun's about to come out. You see like a, you know, a little dot there. come out here sort of looks like a the big diamond on a ring um, because um, I saw a little bit of red on the corner. When I saw the red on the corner, I thought, okay, that must be the sign that you need to put the glasses on, but <laughs> back on. Uh, so I missed that part. Apparently I could have uh, taken them off just a couple of seconds earlier and left them on, uh, left them off a couple of seconds more, uh, but I was too chicken to risk it. Uh, but I did see the full Corona and because we were at uh an absolute great place in it. We had almost uh, about four minutes or at least three, if not four minutes of full totality, uh, which was absolutely spectacular. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah. I I, 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 I shot a few photos. I have one that turned out, I I shot them through my glasses. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Cause uh, it turned out pretty good. Actually one, the one I shot, I, put the camera right up to my lens on the glasses I had my head down so I was like looking at the, the yes. camera and let's see where is it here okay there's the photos come on load it up load it up where is it uh there we go it's a little blurry but you can see it here I'll share it with you in just a sec it's uh digitally enhanced so it's like a digital zoom in but you get an idea it's uh that was through through the uh, glasses right so you can see it right there that's about as much as we got here in Ottawa. Yeah. It didn't We didn't get a full blackout, but that was only through the glasses could I do that because otherwise it was like, nope, not showing up at all. <laughs> it was just okay. a, a regular old sunshine. If uh... Now, this uh, thing I'm showing you is from Sean Rouse, who's been a guest on our show. Mm-hmm. He says, for those on the fence about whether you want to travel to an area of 100% totality to see the eclipse, I present the difference between 99% right. and 100%. percent mm. So 99%, you only see like a little sliver on the edge, but 100%, you see the whole corona. It's yeah. worth it. Um, Sean did not lie when he said it was worth it. And uh, so we had family here uh, yesterday, uh, came from uh, Richmond Hill, and they came all the way up. And we were toying because the weather changed a little bit and it seemed that there was going to be cloud in Kingston. So we were toying about uh, going up to Montreal or Cornwall to see it because the weather was going to be better, but we stayed. And I have to say, we got very, very lucky because there was cloud, but the cloud was way, way high up. It wasn't low cloud. Mm -hmm. So we still got to see it. And the low cloud came. The low cloud came literally two minutes after totality. Okay. (laughs) Here's a photo I took. So I just showed you the photos through the glasses. This one, I just held them up, held the camera up and just shot a bunch until I got something that was somewhat. But you can see in the bottom, Right near the bottom yeah. of the frame, there's there's what the sun would actually look like, right? That's the like you get the reflection yes. from the lens there. So there's the you know bit of the corona. But if you look at it, you wouldn't oh, yeah. know. See? Yeah, yeah, that I see reflection that reflection you get. So that's that's what was actually visible through glasses. Yeah, in the bottom bottom of the frame there. But if you looked up, this is what you would see. So I did okay. not look up, of course, because I had. Yes. I like being able. You're to not have Donald vision. Trump. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Yes. <laughs> Um, so we took a few ourselves. Uh, this is, uh, so you can see for all intents and purposes, my, my brother-in-law. 
and this one I just blew up a little bit so you could see it. Yeah. So it's a little digitized, but that's what it like. Yeah. So, so if you uh, put this one up here, yeah. we got to this. Oh wow! Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Andre uh, Andre has an absolutely amazing camera. Oh, cool. Yeah, you definitely need the right camera for something like that. I was just using my phone. He, he him too was a phone, but for oh, some really? reason he had like thirty times mag. Oh, okay. 30 times zoom or something ridiculous because I tried it with mine and none of that happened. Well, my phone is a couple of years old now. I'm yeah. due for an upgrade this summer. So, But look, that's pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. No, and it doesn't, and, and the camera doesn't even capture what it is because it was like literally black on a bluish sky with a bright, bright, bright white yeah. corona like this. And it looked like it was, you know, sort of radiating off it. So it was absolutely and totally awesome. I am uh, glad I did it. Uh, thank you so much as well uh, to our curling club because our curling match was supposed to be at 1.30 yesterday afternoon. They moved it to 9, uh, which, well, as for the result, didn't work out very well for us. Oh, God, we played awful. Oh, jeez. So we're out of the playoffs. But... Um, I was home in time <laughs> mm -hmm. to spend time with family yeah. and uh, watch it. And, you know, you made a big day of we made a day of it. You know, we all had lunch together and then we hung out a bit. And then, you know, when the eclipse time came, you know, we all sat in the backyard and we were watching it and chatting. And then after that, we had a lovely supper together. And then they went home and then it was just a beautiful day. Cool. My, my niece and nephew, Kiki and Marco, were here and uh, um, they noticed uh, my cup for the show. And Marco, who's about, I guess, 14, 15 now, mm -hmm. high school, uh, excellent volleyball player, by the way. Um, he has a tournament coming up and uh, another one in, in Ottawa coming that we're going to go see. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's really like hardcore. He might be uh, trying for the national team one day. You never know. Yeah, cool. um, but he's uh, competing at that level. Um, we came over and they saw the cup. It's like, oh, you got merch. <laughs> I said, yeah, we even have stickers. And Kiki was about 10. It's like, stickers? Because yeah, he states stickers to a child. Things. So, uh, yes, they love the cup. I gave them a couple of stickers. <laughs> so uh, it's always a, 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 I'm such a proud uncle. I always love uh, spending time with them. So it's. Oh. Um, Post eclipse. Uh, I'm Post eclipse boy. yesterday, I uh, took the dog to the park yesterday, and this is only her second time in the dog park. And she played with dogs for a few minutes and then saw people playing tennis. And this is what Ooh. happens when my dog sees ple people playing tennis. Hang on. Runs after the ball, back side to side? Yeah, well, just watch. Whole park full of dogs. She just wants to get the tennis ball that's being knocked back and forth. <laughs> Lola Federer. <laughs> oh, that is so cute. I love that. Oh. Well, we'll hear that. Humans, humans, can I play too? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> put a racket in my paw. Put a racket in my paw. <laughs> well, just, and this, this is this one's funny. It's, it's like other dogs. Okay, you think she wants to play? Nope. Nope. Just. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. I, I got to chase the tennis ball on the other side of the net. <laughs> my wacky dog. Anyway, that was my afternoon. Uh, you've gone. Uh, I can't hear you, sir. You're on mute there. I don't know. What Sorry. Yeah, there you go. Now you're back. I don't know how that happened. And of course, uh, yesterday was another special day, Mr. Grizzly. Um, if you will put it up there, because uh, these uh, posters were everywhere because it was the eclipse, right? Uh huh. Are you ready for the rapture? Jesus is coming on April 8th, 2024. So I didn't even know the guy was moaning. But anyway, um, so um, they turn around and. <laughs> What? 
I'm not Jesus. saying a damn thing. <laughs> so uh, I spent also the day yesterday preparing for my duty as emotional support Canadian when Jesus once again lets those waiting for the rapture know that he's just not that into them. So um, <laughs> after the eclipse was over, I wrote, so um, do we live in an asshole-free world now? Were they all rounded up and collected? Yeah. Uh, I haven't come across an asshole yet since well the maybe so the rapture may have happened I, i'd say give it a few minutes you know, it's, it's still early they were probably in maybe uh, maybe <laughs> i don't know if you saw this yesterday I'm, i don't know if you saw this this is uh, len weber member of parliament he put this up and it was retweeted by a bunch of people of course they got ridiculed for it because they fail to understand <laughs> yes 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 proof proof that conservatives can't a science b comedy it, it complete like guys this really backfired on you like really backfired on you for people because you're saying that, that trudeau's the sunshine and the bringer of darkness is pierre polyev yep so yesterday basically they put out a meme and again in true conservative style they have no original thoughts whatsoever none whatsoever you have to understand with canadian conservative movement the entirety entirety of their shtick is to look at what has happened in the us in the eu and in the uk and if it's worked for conservatives there they just lift it wholesale change a couple of words to try to adapt it for the canadian environment mm -hmm. and do it here that's it there's no original thought. Everything is downloaded from the central brain. So yesterday they were out there like this and they were putting this meme out. And for those who are watching, it was a meme with Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyèvre. And Justin Trudeau is in black and white, Polyèvre is in color. And then Polyèvre starts a little bit to the left of Trudeau and start, keeps moving gradually. It's four frames until his face is right in front of Trudeau's. Like this. Because, you know, Pierre is going to eclipse Trudeau. And because, of course, this was totally original idea that didn't come from any place else whatsoever. Oh, there was oops. no American yeah. version of it with Trump and Biden, right? Not an original thought. Not an original Not thought. An original there thought. I yeah. You got here like, a parody account that I like, Eric O'Toole. Yes, yeah. Eric underscore O'Toole MP, totally 100% completely not bringing Trumpism to Canada. So yes, so again, if you understand how eclipses work, as Mr. Grizzly says, something dark comes for a while covers, covers the sun. and covers the sun yeah. and then f -f fades away. <laughs> they don't even see the the, the symbolism in the temporarily whole thing. covers yeah. the sun darkness comes if you believe in superstition they, they bad things see. happen you have to throw virgins into the volcano or something right or make a sacrifice or make the gods happy or else that darkness that comes is gonna like ruin your crops for the next 30 years or something just, just they fail to see it just this is why conservative humor never lands mm. this is why there aren't world there isn't a plethora of world famous conservative leading comics well and, and here's another because the one. jokes so, are not funny so i'll release a, a short from this because i think this is good shorts material and of course we'll get picked on they'll go oh you liberals i'm like never said i was a liberal just because I'm shitting on the bad conservative leader doesn't automatic make me something else. Yep. I will pick on any particular leader that does terrible things to harm people. I don't give a shit what their political party is. Do bad things, we're calling you out for it. Simple as that. It's that simple. It is not complicated. Just because I'm picking on the conservative leader because he is a piece of shit doesn't make me an instant liberal, loving Trudeau fanboy. And he is a piece of shit is yes. not a hyper-partisan statement. It is merely a declarative statement of fact. Simple as that. That's it. Nobody's Simple trying to be mean. That. 
No. Nope. Just calling a thing a thing. Look, people on the hill call him that. <laughs> Seriously. I'm not joking. Yeah, that, that, that's a serious thing. That's not yeah. that's not just like two dudes sitting at home in front of a like a camera and a mic making it up because we want it to be true. It's like, just like yeah. nobody likes this guy. Nobody likes <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's as been stated before on the show, and I I wish I had I had created it. But somebody else did. And I don't remember who it says he has anti charisma. Anti charisma, yes. And that was a staffer who said that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how, how how worse it can get. If he ever became prime minister, I, I guess we'd find out. But yeah, we got to work really damn hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, Pierre never had the makings of a varsity athlete. So yeah, this yesterday as well, because we had to do this. Marked safe from believing the solar eclipse is anything other than the moon passing in front of the sun. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. A couple of minutes. Um, but yeah. And then uh, of course somebody else put out an account that I like at Brat Brad D Brad D R O F. L I T, Brad of Lit, I guess, or Brad of Lit. Power down all your devices 30 minutes before the eclipse, cell phones, PC, tablets, etc. Turn off your Wi Fi router too. This will prevent the mothership from tracking you. Yes, yes. Which reads exactly like what the mothership would say. <laughs> Not saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> so please, 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 somebody confirm the rapture actually happened and we are now living in an asshole free world because that would make me so happy. But until I get corroborating scientific proof from an independent source that is reliable and trusted, I will assume the assholes are still among us. Hmm. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a, All right. I've got a clip here from Charlie Angus yesterday. Yes, please. Have you seen this? Uh, I have not. Okay, it's it's a really bad look. Just well, here. A bad look uh, for Charlie Angus? No. No. Okay. I, I, I would it. have been surprised. You'll here just 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 watch. Okay. Timmons James Bay. Thank you. I always enjoy the synthetic outrage I hear in the house. Um, certainly, I remember some great conservative moments. Do you remember when Tony Clement took fifty million dollars of border security money uh, to to buy fake boats, gazebos in Muskoka, the ultimate pork barrel scandal? Uh, Nigel Wright, the ninety thousand dollar check to Mike Duffy, one of the most unworthy political figures we've ever seen in this country, but he was a bagman for the Tories. But the issue here is the role of Parliament and the necessity of Parliament to maintain the ability to get evidence. That's what we're here to do. So I want to speak uh, in the moment I have of the need to use the tools that we have. We do not have the power to find guilt at committee. Our job is to gather evidence and bring it to the House. So we are here at the House now on an issue of those failing to provide the evidence that was required of them. And I'm asking and, and say we will certainly support getting this motion through as quickly as possible. Honourable Member for Calgary Middleport. Yeah, and I'd like to thank the member for Timmins, James Bay, uh, for relieving us of our misery and announcing his resignation. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate that. Uh, you know, um, we're all going to really miss him on this side of the house. Not. No. What the? F Sorry. Excuse. I'm going to drop the. I'm dropping the first one of the day. What the fuck was that? That's uh, Stephanie Cousy, uh, member of parliament for Calgary Mindapur. Uh, we we used to be friends. We don't speak anymore. We don't speak what anymore. What the fuck was yeah. that? We stopped speaking about a year ago. Maybe it was two years ago. I think when she uh, when Pierre Polyev first got into power in his position. So about a year and a half ago, uh, and she she was campaigning for him, even though there was no election. Marching through the streets saying, Pierre Polyev is going to make Canada the freest nation on earth. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? We already are. You have gone right down the conspiracy theory, bizarre narrative rabbit hole. 
And then she blocked me on Twitter and we've never spoken since. We used to be friends. But she has gone so far down the rabbit hole. And that's, trust me, there's a whole lot more I know. But I'm not going to talk about it. Because I'm not, I'm not into destroying somebody's life. No. If it was public knowledge, yeah. if the things became public, we would discuss them. These things are not public, so we're not discussing them. But Jeez. like, like. Get saucy. Not one ounce of cooth. No. Complete, complete lack of self-respect, complete lack of decorum, complete lack of, of respect is a for another member of parliament. Like. That's a loss of mastery of self. Yeah. Yeah. That's a loss of mastery of self. That you would allow yourself to put your name, your face, and your voice. Yeah. With cameras rolling. Mm -hmm. To something like that. Oh, yeah. You are out of order. Agreed. You've lost mastery of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You should not make, be making decisions for anyone. Nope. Yeah. That like is said, we used to be friends. unacceptable, unparliamentary, unCanadian, un... Yeah, all of the above. Uh, her husband and I used to be really good buddies, but... We don't really speak anymore either because yeah. of her behavior. And look, they're partners, so it's fine. I get it. I get it. But she's gone so far down the rabbit hole, she's gone. She's gone. See, and when that started, before she talked, Charlie Angus was speaking, and I was convinced I even brought up the article because mm -hmm. I was convinced he was talking about GC Strategies partner Christian Firth, who has, has been ordered to appear before MPs on April 17th because he was found in contempt of parliament. Yeah. That's when he was talking about not being able to make um, decisions on the guilt of someone, but to collect the evidence. And I thought he was, you know, okay, we've got the evidence that this guy has not answered truthfully, so I'm bringing it to the House for the House to pass some type of motion mm -hmm. to compel him to appear. I thought that that's where was, that's what that was going, and I actually... I'll prove it to you. I have it open right here, Mr. Grizzly, if you'll put it up for the kids. I thought, I know where this is going, so I brought this up so I could comment from it and add it to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And then she appeared. Yep. I was like, oh boy, I read that one wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh yeah, that one's been uh, making the rounds. It's like, you really embarrassed yourself. No class. And this is the thing, I, you know, when we were talking about yesterday, saying that there's about 18 months left, mm -hmm. right? And there's a time for doing things. We talk about this also when uh, it talks about um, bringing that case uh, for, I think it is Bill 21 or Bill 96 in Quebec to the Supreme Court of Canada, where the prime minister is not, you know, everybody said, you, you should need to stand up for minority rights now. And it's like, why would I shoot the shot now? Because it's not even at the Supreme Court of Canada. And that's when I send a team with intervener status and make up until then, there's nothing to be gained for me here. Like this, and all I'm going to do is like put out all my talking points and my lines five years before I need them, and then when I'm going to need them, they're not going to be worth anything, right? So this is what's go. So you know, the time at which you decide to step up and do something in politics matters, and sometimes it's not the instant something happens. Sometimes your time is a little later. Just you have to be patient, and so I thought, you know, with this type of thing, it's like, well, you know. At the time, there's three years to go. Mm -hmm. It's like this if Trudeau starts com campaigning and defining Polyev now, yes, people are going to forget that when it comes time to vote. He's going to have time to jump off of that. Now, the alternative situation is that Pierre spends a full year defining the prime minister, and well, he's got his honeymoon period now when the, kick, the tires part in the pole. But you know, I kept on saying that time is not his friend. This is not sustainable for another now 18, 18, 18 months. We've seen it for four, the last four, and it's already losing steam. Right? Yeah. People are already tired of getting tired of his act and his shtick, and they want something else. And okay, yeah, but what else have you got? Is basically that's basically where Pierre Polyev is at the moment. Is like, yeah, yeah, that's nice, but what else has got? We we know you're going to do that, but what else have you got? And right now, he's not showing he's got much anything else. 
doesn't mean he doesn't have anything. He might also have a plan to show it a little later as well. Well, it will be most effective, but right now he's not showing it. Uh, but the prime minister, like I said, he's got 18 months to turn, the, to turn that boat around and to just to start positioning himself and making you know, these, types of, uh, these types of calls. So, um, yeah, I really thought, really, 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 really thought it was um, playing the long game mm -hmm. that was going on here. Uh, but nope, not at all. So um, if this is what it's going to be, it's just going to be 18 more months of this type of nasty and missing every freaking off ramp to show a little bit of class or decorum. Because yeah. that tells me one of two things. Either there's not a second act or, and it can be an and, not just an or, or what they're getting on their internal polling data is telling them that whatever base it is that they do not want to lose, this, that base that they keep on throwing this little, these little pieces of red meat to, they're extremely fickle oh, and yes. need constant, constant validation. Because on paper, there is nowhere that move is good and recommended unless the fringiest, the most angry element of your base is so volatile and you feel you're losing them. So therefore you got to give them a little something to keep them close. Like a pusher. Yeah, a little. Like this, and you're noticing that uh, your mark is uh, talking to another pusher who might be offering them something a little cheaper. So uh, you throw in a free sample. Well, we need to... Uh... We need to address how this, you know, I like Greg Fergus. I think he's a mm -hmm. nice man. I think he was a good MP. Yeah, he doesn't have control. He does not have control of the House as Speaker. Yep. This is the he's Speaker of the House enough. in the Manitoba, or the Saskatchewan Legislature. Watch this. This is 11 seconds, or f 15 seconds, sorry. I apologize. Uh, with your own apologies. Stand up, please. Don't slouch <gasps> with disrespect okay. of the Stand institution. Up. Stand up. With your own apologize. Apologize. <laughs> yes. That's what you do. That's, That's how you, you do, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was like, when eighth stood up and just as a throwaway said, yeah, I apologize. Sorry. No, you don't mean it. You don't mean it. I want to say thanks to oh, Cassie fine. for sorry, sending Dad. that to me. Yeah. Thank you, Cassie. But that's one of those things. Oh, you didn't. Oh, no, fine. Sorry. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. You stand. Take seven seconds, center yourself, and actually mean the words that are going to come out of your mouth. Yeah. Take a quarter of a second to join us back here in reality and actually consider what it is you've done and how stupid you looked doing it. Mm -hmm. Then actually mean it when you say sorry. This, that speaker, I'm, you know what? I don't even care if the person, uh, the, uh, the political ideology of the person he was calling out there. Don't, you do it. You, that's what you do. Period. That is how it's done. Bad behavior gets called out. Doesn't uh, matter who. This statement here from James, I'm going to put it on the screen. I completely agree with this. Maybe the speaker should not be a member of parliament, but a completely neutral person who can keep people in line without being accused of partisanship. I agree. I agree. And I think that might be one of the reasons why Greg Fergus, uh, member of the Liberal Party, and he was a, a member of, uh, for Hull, Gatineau Hull, uh, perhaps that is why he does not reprimand conservatives so much, because they'll just say, oh, see, it's partisanship. It's about, like he's in a no-win situation. You so, do it anyway. Oh, agreed. Agreed. No, no, but like this is what I'm saying. This is my theory, right? Because a lot of people turn around and says, well, you know, we can't, like in the United States where they're, probably, they're going after Trump, it says, well, we have to make sure that every I is especially dotted and every T is especially crossed because he's a former president and he's still ranked. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. He goes, oh, well, he bitched out the, you know, the judge's daughter. Oh, well, you know, like this, we won't, we won't include, you know, Judges, family members in the first gag order. Then he does it again. Okay, now we will. 
like this. And so what? And if he does it again, was somebody going to actually take him and throw him in jail like any other normal person would be? No, he'll probably get charged like a $10,000 fine and be allowed to keep doing it, right? Because he's a former president and still running. It's like, just treat him like everybody else, damn it. Yeah. Like this, or... Gee, we can't invoke the Emergencies Act now because the people that have gathered are all in front of Parliament Hill to hold our city hostage and lock everything down for four years and try to shut down our borders may get upset and mad. Oh, no. They get upset and mad because anyway. they breathe. Yeah, no matter what. Because Justin Trudeau took a breath, yeah. they get upset and mad. They're going to get upset and mad anyway whether matter. you do the thing or don't do the thing so do the thing don't not do the thing because you're afraid it's like not doing something because you're afraid it's going to come across as political is a political decision agreed there's something other than just the law that you factored in to making your decision just make the decision and apply it like you would to anyone, and let those who would have screamed, whether you did it or not, scream. Well, have you? I don't know if you've seen Just, this. Great, great. Fergus is is too nice. Yeah, he, no that 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 is my only issue with him. He's too nice. He really is. He he needs to call out these this type of behavior and do it in the same way that uh, speaker did. Um, this is uh, he needs, Doctor he needs to meet Dad on Sunday, the Sunday yeah. drive back in the fifties. So if you don't stop fucking up back there, I'm going to come back there and make you stop. Yeah, that's what needs <laughs> to take place. Don't, do not make me stop this car. <laughs> he needs to find that dad voice. Well, let's have another one here. This is Dr. Stephen Ellis. He's a member of parliament for uh, Cumberland Colchester. And I don't know if you saw this clip. This is 27 seconds of what the hell, dude. This is yesterday. Yesterday, the day before, I'm not sure. It must have been yesterday. Yeah. When will this narcissistic prime minister, who is not worth the cause, crime, or corruption, end this cruel and disaster? I will let the honorable member maybe rephrase that. The honorable member for Cumberland Colchester. Well, uh, you know what, Mr. Speaker? What I would like to say here is given the fact that I uh, practice a physician a long time, that's the diagnosis, Mr. Speaker. When will this narcissistic prime minister? Yeah. Uh, if he's a doctor, I would not go to him for a hangnail if he thinks that that's the diagnosis. Because clearly, uh, he took an X-ray to diagnose a blood condition. Yeah, I just, I was just like, Ugh. and. Again, right? This prime minister is not worth the cost, the time, or corruption. So somewhere there is a prime minister that's worth the corruption, sir. He may be a doctor, just, but he's not very smart. Again, just this prime minister is not worth the time. So what you're saying is that somewhere there is one who is well, worth the cost, of time, and corruption. And I guess since you are saying this with the subtext being Pierre for prime minister, you're basically confessing that Pierre is the prime minister for whose corruption we will have time. Well, to be willing to let's, let's not forget that Pierre Polyev is a textbook narcissist. Textbook narcissist. He's never wrong about anything. He's always right. He's always number one. He's always the best. He's always, always. That is the definition of a narcissist. Narcissists do not apologize for anything ever. Because they're never wrong. Prime ministers apologize for a lot of things and things that weren't even his doing. He's, he's like, it's just so ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous. That's exactly uh, what I was thinking. Uh, 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 you're just so ridiculous. <laughs> it's just. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay, new rule. First one to yell narcissist is the narcissist. Yeah. Accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. 
and from Carpet Bomber. The problem is conservatives continue to do this crap because they know they will get away with it. Nobody's in control in the House of Commons anymore. You're right. You're right. right. I, I wish you weren't, but you are. You're correct, sir. You're right. Uh, or ma'am, I don't know Carpet Bomber. I get Carpet Bomber, yeah. Uh, people. Uh, sometimes they're highly overrated. All right. Present company excluded. Of course. <laughs> Um, also, uh, in news, uh, something that's happening in the United States side, uh, which I find really interesting because, again, people like to pick ideas from everyone else. And this would be a very good in the liberal next election agenda. Uh, but there's new legislation coming in the states aimed at protecting Americans' data online, which could eventually become the nation's first comprehensive data privacy law. According to NPR, if passed, it would set a national privacy standard stronger than any existing state laws. It would give Americans control over their personal data, including new protections against data brokers who routinely sell personal data based on a user's web activity. It would allow people to opt out of targeted advertising and sue companies that violate online privacy protections. The U.S. and Canada lag far behind the European Union in this type of legislation, which protects digital rights and privacy online. I truly believe that if the Liberals campaigned on giving Canadians back control of their digital ID and their digital data, that that could be a winner, especially with the youngins. Well, you know. Well, I'm just saying a lot of this budget pre announcements is stuff that's targeted to young adults. The housing mm -hmm. stuff, the mortgage stuff, the. You know, so this is another one. Uh, I consider myself somewhat savvy, and I know the generation after me is way more savvy. Uh, so when it comes to stuff like data and everything, you know, they know what's going on with their stuff. Um, oh, yeah. I think it would be very, very... V a lot more people and a lot of people, I think, would, would come out to vote in support of something like that. Yeah, kid Jen, but if you say digital ID, people lose their minds. Uh, here's a news flash. You all already have one. Yeah. This is not, it's, 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 this is, it's, been, they've been it, around it, for one of them. It's, it's just Wild Wested. It's like you're in the, if you have an ISP, you have a digital ID. Just, just, I, I, it's just fact. <laughs> <laughs> you have a digital footprint and everybody knows where you've been. The government is tracking everybody, me on my on my. Not everybody list. knows where you've been. <laughs> yes, it's like, don't, don't worry about the shot. You got this. Trust yeah. me, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna track me with a nanite in the in the vaccine, so I'm not getting it. And send tweet. Uh huh. Exactly right. It says they'll never they'll never find me here. Yes. <laughs> like all the geniuses geniuses absolute rocket surgeons filming themselves committing crimes on january 6th in the u.s live streaming the crimes that they were committing because or or deleting your emails or cleaning up cleansing your account no, it's no. already too late people it's already out there man it's already too late that's that wonderful thing about the whole stuff in the united states and all these crimes and stuff like that it's like there's always an email trail. It's like they can't wait to crime. It's like, oh, I just got a better idea how to make our crime better. It's like, pick up the damn phone. Not, not <laughs> Have a meeting in a parking garage like they used to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. Tomorrow we're going to be criming. Let's send a text. What are you going to wear to the criming? <laughs> it's like, I never sent anybody text. Judge, exhibit A, what are we going to wear to the criming? <laughs> it's like, oh, I forgot I said that. Oopsie. <laughs> it's like, geez, people. Oopsie. Come on. Everybody, people are documenting their crimes now. And it's like, they're not, it's like there was a time, kids, I I've heard on a good authority, where criminals used to meet in places alone in the dark mm -hmm. and make agreements that they wouldn't tell anybody else except for the people who knew 
what it is that they were going to do. Just, there used not, to be a time when criminals liked the element of surprise. We're not dealing with the brightest bulbs <laughs> in the Christmas tree here. <laughs> I mean, we're just not. We're just not. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. This, I'm going to commit the perfect crime. I'm going to document everything I do in email. <laughs> it's like, uh, all right. Uh, man. I don't know. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's It's absolutely disheartening <laughs> the amount of stupidity oh jeez i know uh um hold on a second sorry got a cough oh i uh, didn't get to mention it yesterday um but uh another weekend a another world champion but it is not who we thought it would be because the world's uh, men's curling championships were going on and uh, the women won the world championships and Brad Gushu's team was playing for Team Canada mm -hmm. and uh, they have won the world championship before in 2017 and the Olympic gold back in the day and uh, one of the best teams in the world ranked number two in the world rankings uh, currently and they were in the final against Team Sweden uh, uh, facing the team of Nicholas Adin who will probably go down in history as the world's most successful curling player because uh, I think he already had six world championships uh, to his name. Uh, it was a great match. Uh, like the round-robin match that Canada had lost to Sweden, uh, Canada got to a, down to a 3-0 a deficit very quickly. Uh, but unlike the first match, they were able to uh, catch back up, and it went down to the last shot in the last end, with Canada having three rocks absolutely perfectly placed in the rings. You couldn't ask uh, asked the team to do much better to try to steal one to win the match. And Nicholas Adin, well, he Nicholas Adin again and did a perfect shot into the forefoot and won another world championship for Sweden. <laughs> this guy, he's just too damn good. Um, but Team Canada has absolutely nothing Nothing, 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 nothing to be ashamed about. Um, they won silver. They literally did win silver. They did everything they can. They threw everything they had uh, at uh, Team Sweden. Even though they didn't have the best start, uh, they were able to claw back and got themselves into a winning uh, position. Uh, and, and that's all you can have in curling when you don't have last shot is uh, on your last shot before the last shot of the match that you have put yourself in winning position. And uh, they did. But on the day, Nicholas Dean was just too damn good. And even though that match just took place on Sunday, both of them today, two days later, are at a Grand Slam curling event and they'll be playing each other in the first match. Right? <laughs> it's like just won the world championship against you, playing you again two days later in another tournament. Here we go. That's curling for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my words. Uh, oh, uh, Ms. Shadika says, bah, ha, ha, oh, my God, did you see, did you guys see the Trudeau Eclipse glasses video, the way he waves to the crowd from the roof? I did not. No. I'm going to have to go look at that. I haven't seen it. All right, I did, I'm going to uh, have to go find that. Um, Tavi sent something nice. Though. I'll show you. It's a, a photo, a nice photo of a truck of an informed individual. This is the, uh, I'll put it on the screen and I'll read it to you because it might be a little bit hard to read. It says, uh, this is on the tailgate of a truck somewhere in Ontario. And it's a farm truck because it has a farm plate on it. It says, my version of freedom. One, empathy for the troubled. Two, respect for our laws and the rights of our neighbors. Three, consideration for others regardless of politics, religion, gender, or race. Four, appreciation for what we have, for what we are and have as Canadians. Freedom is not just about me. I'm like, yeah. I don't know who that person is, but uh, they get it. I like that a lot. Yeah, they get it, right? Yeah, I mean, how many times do we have to say it, right? It's not just about you. Vote for something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, while Brad uh, Gushu uh, did all they could to bring home uh, gold for Canada, but were ultimately unsuccessful, and... Uh, Kit uh, Ina 
Uh, I did see your comment the other day. Uh, she said that uh, when she's at home using her Swiffer mop, she pretends she's be sweeping. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, but um, also on the weekend, uh, if you will remember, uh, for International uh, Women's Day, we had guest Lorraine Ostigui with us, mm -hmm. who's a skate coach and is a particular fan of synchronized skating. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you would, here, uh, I will take down the volume and I will only show a little couple seconds clip because this is directly from the International Skating Union oh, and, and I'm not sure how many rights that we have, but for a couple of seconds. But this is uh, from uh, Quebec, Les Supremes. And they won. And uh, this is how they started. If you said synchro better from there, a couple tiny errors, of course, uh, because I mean, you know, You've got all these bodies and whatnot, but overall a great program. And for the third time in a row, they are world champions. That's pretty awesome. Three peat world champions. Thank you very much. Defeating the Haydenets from the United States uh, and actually increased their lead from uh, the short program to the long program uh, or the free in this case. Uh, I really suggest that you uh, take a couple of minutes and watch the routine because it's really worth it. So I'm going to include a link here in the chat for you that I'm going to ask Mr. Grizzly to put in for you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, do take a chance. You know, it's uh, literally eight minutes and thirty seconds of your time from beginning to end. Because uh, if you if you check out the replays and the commentary after it and get the judges score, but the routine is still about four something uh, worth uh, of your time to see. Because um, these are athletes that don't get a lot of TV time. No. Uh, in sports like these, but they work just as hard. Uh, and uh, on the show too, I also mentioned um, that. Uh, in this sport, um, well, in, in figure skating in general, uh, there's been a, a new rule that is going to allow for same-sex couples and pairs. Oh, that's uh, good. Coming, and, and a nice dancing coming up. Uh, and uh, Canada was the first nation in the world that uh, sanctioned it uh, for the nationals. So at nationals this year, there could have been uh, same-sex uh, pairs in ice dancing, I believe, uh, competing. Uh, and I did not know this, but... Uh, um, Caitlin Weaver from the duo Weaver and Pohe, Pohe, uh, who have done this uh, very proud on the international scene, uh, seems that uh, the entire time they competed together, mm -hmm. um, she is not entirely heterosexual. And Nobody knew this, and she had kept it secret and hidden and closeted because in Ice Dance, often Mm -hmm. The stories are of romance. Yes. And the pairs. Sometimes you get a brother and sister combination, which doesn't allow for that, and they have to win, like the Shibutanis, and they who did to, very well. And they but had there's to a whole for France. Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, that's the Duchenes. Oh, Duchenes. Competed Sorry, for France. Yeah. The Shibutanis com competed for the United States. But yes, the, the Duchenes also were brother and sister. So you had to come up with other yeah. elements. You couldn't use the romantic mean, thing, no. right? I mean, I guess you could do it as acting, but <laughs> it's just weird. Um, so, but there's a whole sense of programs that are not available to them. And for example, Saleh and Peltier, when they did the love story program, people wondered if they were dating virtually not, more they never the have. entire time they were together. So you're dating, right? You're dating. You have so much chemistry. You have no. to be dating. It's like, nope, not even close. No. Um, and she, she, if you see the two of them in interviews, she is the the uh, the alpha in that in yes. that team. Yes, and I'm not diminishing Scott Moore at all. Nope, on his own, he's great. Yeah, no, no, she's the, she's the dominant personality, clearly, um, in that team, and that and that's fine. You need a leader, and you need a follower. Like this for these types of team dynamics uh, mm -hmm. to work. Um, but, but the follower, trust me, the follower is not a pushover. The follower may not speak often, but when they do, oh, exactly. listens <laughs> <laughs> for these types of dynamics to work. Um, but yeah, uh, they're opening that up. Uh, in this team, though, uh, in the, the group synchro, uh, Boys have been allowed for a while yet, and Le Supreme actually has a male member of the team. So if you watch it like this, it's all girls and one guy in there. So again, Canada, far ahead uh, of other nations, 
three time world champions. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. Well done. And like I said, you know, and, and things are changing also in Synchro because I used to watch it when I was a kid and it used to be just lines and formations and, you know, passing through people and, you know, lines that would go through each other and, you know, you try not to get a bump or a collision. But now there are some lifts. Now there are pair spins, like everybody's joining together as a pair and doing a, comb- a pair spin mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Like they're adding other elements. I've even seen uh, uh, in this program near the end, uh, while the, there's a formation changing, two of the skaters do a single jump. Uh, which jumps, I remember there was, a, there was a time where jumps were not allowed as well. So um, as the sport is becoming uh, more athletic and more uh, in- introducing more elements of risk, of course, it's allowing for things like we saw, like you know, openings where they actually form together, get, get together and create a mountain formation. Mm-hmm. Just again, they're all on skates and anyone could slip at any time. And the people they're holding up also have skates, so anything yes. could slice a part of a body at any time. One, yes. one it's, loss of balance or it's whatnot. Dangerous. So, so before there was the X Games, figure skating was the extreme sport. Believe it or not, and that's why it got so popular. Yeah, because it's it's, it's faded in popularity, unfortunately, for some reason, mm. um, especially as people are doing like quads and you know yeah. some people are even like attempt to uh, quad uh, the u.s uh guy um, yeah I remember his name all, the, all all of a sudden who won the world championship landed a quad axle yeah an axle is different than the other jumps the reason why it's a harder jump is because it has a half a rotation more because you enter from the back mm-hmm. going backwards and you exit forwards so an axle is even though it's a triple axle it's really a three and a half so that's why it's uh, considered the hardest of the jumps. Uh, and the guy landed a quadruple axle, four and a half revolutions in the air, landed in competition at a world championship. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I found I've got the clip of uh, the PM <laughs> waving to people during Yes, the, please. Yeah, so, but I'm going to show you the clip. Uh, he, he just says sunny ways was what he tweeted and I've got the video clip. I'll show you that. And then I'll show you the response from a former member of parliament. So here he is. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> okay. Right. And let's see what the response from sunny ways. That's the tweet. I like that. And the response from former member of parliament, Jody Wilson-Raybould. Oh, you can God, take no, the house, no. the dog. I'll even load it in my car. Take your mother, your brother, and all your tacky friends. I'll even rent a U-Haul to haul you all in. Stick it in the darkest place that you can find. Take your love and put it where the sun don't shine. Oh. Really? That is just classless. And Michelle Rumpel Garner, I love you. I love you. That is all fire and ha ha ha. So it's like, uh, this is just more Stephanie Cousy. That's all it is. It's just like just brutal. Yeah. And here's the other thing I'm noticing. You know, a lot of people think that uh, Sunny Ways is dead, but given how dour and nasty and negative. What conservatives are there's probably an avenue for if not sunny ways at least just decency and hopeful look and i know a lot of people who who will get on the jody wilson raybold bandwagon and say oh what she did was brave what she did was it's like no if a no. politician secretly records a conversation with anyone it's wrong when a cabinet minister is secretly recording a public servant it's wrong and when that cabinet minister is the attorney general of Canada secretly recording the clerk of the Privy Council, it's unconscionable. And she was objectively terrible at her job. Yeah, well, it was wrongfully. There was a man. Halifax man's case yeah. sat on her desk for months. Spent exactly. almost 17 years in prison after being convicted in the brutal murder of his ex-girlfriend, of which he was innocent. Yes, but she's a prosecutor, and prosecutor sends people to jail, so she wasn't willing to give him his day in court. Yeah. Even though there was this mountain of evidence. Yeah. Because she also brought carting to cars with her pot legislation. Yeah. 
So right now in Saskatchewan, I believe uh, they've passed a they've passed a law saying apparently federal law allows it. But now, if you're in a car and a policeman stops you for any reason, broken tail light, you're going too fast, seat belt, whatever it is, because they can, as a matter of course, just give you a breathalyzer. Oh, now, this is, this is you recent, don't, is it? Recent, yeah. Apparently, federal laws permitted it for a while. Mm. I'm guessing that was a law that was changed under Jody Rayson raybould mm. um, But yes, apparently, uh, Saskatchewan has decided that they're going to do that. So now, if you're a resident of Saskatchewan and you get stopped for any reason by the police, like this, for example, your taillight's not working, but you have not been drinking, you're not swerving, you're not like this. Oh, yeah, you got a busted taillight. Oh, hello. Can I see your life? It's, oh. You're black. You're indigenous. Can I uh, get you to push in the push a little breath into this breathalyzer here now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No harassment is going to come from that. None of the systemic discrimination that we know to be true in our law enforcement is going to find a way to manifest itself in the law that allows policemen to give everyone a breathalyzer test if they're stopped for any reason at all. Yeah, that's going to work out really well. Exactly. Kid Cassie, automatic breathalyzer in Saskatchewan traffic stops with a premier convicted of killing a woman while drunk driving. Yeah. I am. <sighs> Listen, I'm all for keeping the road safe. Yeah. I'm all for ride stops where everybody that goes through gets asked the question. But well, you're just driving on the road and for any reason the police can say, hey, uh, oh, I, I I thought you had, oh, sorry. That is I, not a good thing. I, I entered your, I, I ran your plates and I saw something. Oh, sorry, I got the last letter wrong. But uh, while you're here, could you still pump in this breath? By the way, they're not allowed to run your plates unless you've committed a, a, a violation of the Highway Traffic Act. Yeah. You can't just run your plates. They do it. They do it yeah. all the time. And there used to be a time where you could not be asked to deliver a breathalyzer because it was considered unreasonable search and seizure on, yeah. under the Constitution. I guess yes. if the police person, the law enforcement agent, did not have a reason to suspect you had been consuming in the first place. Well, so if and, you and, get stopped like for a broken taillight and you roll down your window and you're like your car hot boxes, mm-hmm. then yes. Could you please walk the line <laughs> like this? But if you open, you can roll down your car window and it smells like pine mm-hmm. and you're not slurring and you're not staggering and you seem completely functional and your pupils are not dilated and all that kind of stuff. Then, uh, by the way, as a courtesy to us, could you blow into this machine? It's like there should be no reason for that. Well, now the reason could be is, well, I decided to stop you. Oh, and I noticed you're indigenous. Yeah. So let's just double check. Of course. We got to wrap it up, but I do want to address the thing that I wrote about earlier with the mm. Ontario PC party. We're committed to improving affordability and convenience for everyone in Ontario. That's why we're calling on the LCBO oh, to bring God. back paper bags at no cost to consumers. Let's just scroll down and see what one of the replies to this is. Let me think. Carbon tax went up three cents. Cost of a paper bag with LCBO printed on it a dollar. Ford complains about the three cents. I can't make this shit up. It's like, <laughs> it's so, well, I mean, I guess he's Ford. Well, yeah. But I guess in this case, Ford is complaining about the bag as well. Yeah, he is, but yeah, it's, I'm not getting that comment, but the three cents he's, he went on a rant about the three cent carbon tax. Yes. And then he's oh, like, yes. okay, it's a dollar. So now we're going to make them free, but he wants to ban he wants to end yes. the carbon tax is what I'm getting at. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, okay, I get you. Yes. You know? Yes. I said, <sighs> kids and cubs, the conservatives are not going to make it easier for you to cover your mortgage by saving you three cents a liter on gas no. or a dollar on a brown paper bag. They're going to save you enough money to make a mortgage payment by supporting national child care. Cause that takes thousands of dollars out of your pockets over a course of a year. They're going to support you do it through dental care. 
because if you need something other than a routine checkup twice a year, that's probably going into the four digits. Mm -hmm. They're going to support you by supporting things like, you know, topping up the Canada child benefit, which is already put back since Trudeau's been in power over $6,000, $8,000 in the Canadian family's pocket. A lot of money. That's the stuff that's going to matter. These are all the things that he does not like. These are all the social, the costly social programs in which conservatives do not believe. But they do believe in trickling down to you another three cents, three cents on your gas, though, or two cents on your GST. It's always pennies at a time mm -hmm. that they like to give it back to you. An extra $55 a month on your ODSP in Ontario. Ooh, let's retire. For pennies a day, you can keep a disabled person living in poverty. Well, and, and here, is it's the just... thing with, here is the thing with that. And I, I do have to give them credit because they're the first government and I don't know how long to increase Yes. It. So we'll give them that credit. But the increase is negligible. It's an insult. Yeah. But they did increase it. It's negligible. As we've had friends on the show who are on ODSP have said, yes. it doesn't make a bloody bit of difference. No, it's like, it's, it's like we keep on saying, like with the health care dollars, record spending in health, I spent a dollar more, that's record spending. It's like, if your increase to the ODSP, the first one you have given in God knows how long, did not keep up with inflation that's accumulated all that time, mm -hmm. yeah, just, you took someone who was drowning, who's going, uh, uh, mm -hmm. and gave them an extra five, oops, to do before they go under. Yeah. That's what, that's all you've done. You haven't given them a life vest. You haven't shown up in a boat. You haven't tried to pull them out of the water. You haven't, you haven't done anything. You just said, here, take a couple of huffs of oxygen so that you can gas five more times before you go down. It's literally all they did. It's that's cruel. It. That is it. Nothing if you're going to do the job, do the full job and do it right. Mm -hmm. Don't half-ass it. Here's some table scraps. Especially when it comes to paying rent and putting food in your belly and making sure that you get your proper medication so that you're healthy. Yeah, so you can contribute to society. And that's the other thing, too. The people are on ODSP are not allowed to work because if you work, they claw, claw, you know, claw back whatever you've earned. It's like, but we're supposed to help people get ahead. Yep. Get Mr. Gal, I need a dollar. Here's a nickel. Well, that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Kids and cubs. I guess we have a show. Do we have not, Mr. Grizzly? We do indeed, sir. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Uh, still have not spotted an asshole other than the ones that uh, Mr. Grizzly uh, put on screen, and I will keep my hope up by hoping they did all of that before the rapture. <laughs> and this was video evidence of their last moments pre-rapture. Um, and that there are still no assholes in the world. Uh, I, I will go out today and confront my theory uh, to reality. But hopefully <laughs> we are now in an asshole-free world thanks to the eclipse. Oh, Kit Michael goes, this asshole is still here. <laughs> oh, shut up, Michael. <laughs> yes, but you're a lovable asshole. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> yes. You may be an asshole, but you're my kind of asshole. <laughs> so you get to stay. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Because sharing is caring. Please, 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 please tell your peeps and poops all about us. Oh, well, oh, I, yeah, Kid Dance just said, I'm an asshole. I made it. He just put a theory in my head. What if all the assholes, we are the assholes and we got to stay? Never considered that possibility. Oh, well, <laughs> please tell your peeps and poops all about us uh, because word of mouth is priceless and uh, we love it when it comes from you. If you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl who has sponsored our pod page for a second year. If you scan that QR code right under my chin, that will take you right there. And if you are listening, it is podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and when we have something fresh off the bandwidth it will come directly to you and if you would like to help us in other ways please 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 we would accept with much happiness a donation to the eager beaver lodge emergency hydration fund where our friends caesar guinness hot chocolate because you are what you drink 
and coffee are waiting for us to help us produce right market and everything else we do to get this show to you. So if you would like to help us there, you've got a couple of loonies or toonies jangling in your pocket, then please scan that QR code. Or if you're listening, go to coffee, ko-fi.com slash eagerbeaver, lowercase letters, all in one word, and make your donation there. That's where you'll find our tip jar. We appreciate everything you do. Everything gets reinvested back into the show, of course. And, uh, of course, if you are not able to contribute, you are still welcome here at the Beaver Lodge because the gift of your attention and when you do things like retweet us or participate in the conversation, give us some engagement, that helps us out just as much. So thank you very much. Because democracy is something that you do, please write those letters. Uh, if you happen to live in uh, Stephanie Cousy's electoral district. Calgary, Mindapur. Yeah. Might want to uh, let her know. What it is you thought of that? Yeah. Feel free. I don't care what party you are. 20 years in government, 20 years in parliament, dedicating yourself to public service. You know, even when Pierre Polyev goes, after oh. being a shit, give him, like this, 20, give him, give him his due. Well, look, and here's the thing. You know how much I hate that man. I think he's a vile, disgusting human being. But, and I have said it on this show time and time again, I do know he does put the hours in. They all do. Yes. A 20-hour day is not out of the ordinary for a member of parliament. It's not. It happens all the bloody time. These folks do put the hours in. What, you know, do they accomplish much? Some days, no. But they, they all put the time in, including Stephanie Cousy. But there's no need to behave in that manner. Not in our house. Exactly. Our house. The House of Commons. Our house. That's right. Yep. Uh, <sighs> Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom, please? My lady does, actually. She wanted to Ooh. come in. She's typing away. Hello. Hi. Over here. <laughs> she can't see me. She's in the kitchen on the phone. Bridget. <laughs> okay, here she comes. Hello, Mademoiselle Fox. Hello. Snuggless. Yay. Every time I see you, you just make me happy. Aw, I like that. Seriously. No, really. Am I doing words of wisdom? Yes. Yes, you are. Um, do I have a fox call? <laughs> what does the fox say? <laughs> I don't know. What does the fox say? I'll work on that. Did she remember pants? <laughs> oh. No, honestly, Jen, no, I'm not wearing pants. She's wearing a long night shirt. I'm wearing a plaid nightgown from Giant Tiger with no underpants and no brassiere. <laughs> That's my outfit. I'm wearing no underpants or brassiere either. <laughs> my outfits get worse by the day. The other day I went outside when Lola escaped and ran around center town. I was wearing like, I don't know, friggin' like le leopard print yes. underpants. Like, like not no, like, sorry, leopard print pajama pants. A shitty hat and one of Paul's hoodies. <laughs> like <laughs> walk, walk, fashion, baby. <laughs> and I really like, I really like fashion. So, but not that day. <laughs> no, no. And, and we're walking this giant fashion, white Why are you dog doing with, that? <laughs> this, this super lean dog where you can see her ribs because we're trying to feed her more, but she can't put weight on. So we look like these white trash scum in, of center town. We do. If you love fashion, why are you doing that to it? I know. I like, I'm going to, I don't um, know. I have no Douglas, idea. I'm going to try to up my fashion game. <laughs> Maybe some leather. I don't know. But, you know, like when, uh, these, these are not words of wisdom. It's just a little story. But okay. when the woman, two, two women um, helped us capture her, this ding dong in the end, as well as the unhoused person who's like, I have a tennis ball in my pocket. 
I'm like, okay. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like that makes no sense. But he's like, I'll come it and helped. help. He helped. He was incredible. And uh, anyway, these two women of color, not, which is not relevant, but I'm just trying to explain it well. But when they helped us capture her, when they're like, we have a loaf of white bread. I'm like, well, that's great because I'm white trash. <laughs> <laughs> they're like do you want some bread <laughs> like yeah that sounds great said, put some mustard on it yeah, oh, mustard oh my god don't even i can't even talk about peanut butter would have been ideal at that time i i got mm -hmm. i will not i'm not gonna lie i got fairly corked at a party in montreal at mcgill when I was in university and I made my myself and my friend, we had mustard sandwiches. <laughs> I'm like, this is delicious. Like, she's like, it is. It's actually delicious. I was so drunk. How drunk were you? We had mustard sandwiches. <laughs> I'm like, let's not, let's not sleep with anybody tonight. She's like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's go get some chips. <laughs> Sorry, James, I can't reach here. I'll break my arm if I do. <laughs> We're in a very small, tight space. So I guess my only, my words of wisdom are, um, if you can, eat a mustard sandwich okay. with a side All of right. chips. Okay. And uh, don't adopt a dog for the Ottawa Humane Society. Oh, don't, no, no, do that, do that. Don't be ridiculous, <laughs> that do can, that. They can jump seven feet in the air. Do that, adopt a dog, adopt. Did you tell them about the seven feet in I'll the air? Well, later. We'll do it later. We'll, do it well later. we saw, we saw pictures of jump. Yeah. Seven. She can actually jump. She did seven jump seven feet, feet the, the other air. day. So don't adopt dogs. Don't do that. Don't say that. That's it. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> You've had too much to drink. <laughs> I'm going to roll the credits. Here we go. Enough, I have not had enough coffee. Uh, no. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients Roll your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. I have a quick oh, Easter egg for you. Okay, the, the kits are getting a little saucy. <laughs> yes, I see that. I see that. I have a good Easter egg for you. You'll like this. This is from uh, Karin, Bur Karin Bursing. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He lives in India, and I don't know where I think. It might be Delhi. I'm not sure. Uh, he's one of the funniest follows on Twitter. His comedy is hilarious, and this one is it's just it's on, it's on the nose. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad for laughing, but this is what he tweeted yesterday. Breaking news. Sun shot dead by cops in America after it turns black. Oh, I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> for those listening at home, I actually have my hand in front of my mouth and my eyes are as big as toonies. Yeah, yeah, that's good though, right? It's funny. I mean, it's it's, it's funny. It's terrible, but it's funny. Oh, oh, and uh, yeah, Kit Saucy. Uh, again, if you're listening at home, I'm sorry you're missing out because I can't read this stuff. But if you notice what's going on in the chat, uh, but when uh, Kit Saucy asked if uh, Akon is in the room, <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> smack that all on the floor. Smack that. Give me some more. Smack that. Do you get so? Smack that. Oh, have a beaverific day, everyone. I gotta go. I'll see you later. <laughs> He's discouraged. <laughs>